Several decades ago, God cast Satan down from heaven and confined him to earth. Learn why Satan and millions of demons were cast down and the only way to defeat them. Next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. In the last 10 or 15 years, we have seen terrifying changes in America and in this world. And if you look around, though, almost nobody can explain what is happening. And really, nobody can explain why it's happening. But if you know your Bible and you know and understand God, you can know exactly what is happening and what the solution is for this terrible problem. Only your Bible will reveal that mystery to you. So let me just read to you a verse very quickly, Revelation 12 and verse 12. It gives you a time frame of all this. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea! For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. He knows that he has a short time. That's the best news you could possibly hear, because he's talking about the return of Jesus Christ. He knows it's about up for him, and it's about over. But there's going to be a lot of suffering, and we could really remove it if we would respond to God and His warning message here in Revelation 12 and verse 12. The God of this world is about to be replaced. So I'm going to show you today when Satan was cast down to this earth, and I'm going to show you the very day it happened. And I think you'll see that it's a very exciting and a wonderful truth. Millions of demons, millions of them, have been cast to this earth and are now confined to it. That is the shocker. That's what is most concerning to us if we understand this. But there's really this extremely good news. You have to keep that in mind. Satan only has a short time, and that makes him more wrathful than he's ever been. He knows he's about to be kicked off his throne and, uh, and really just be in the outer abyss forever. And Jesus Christ is going to take over the throne of this earth and rule it forever, as well as the universe. Notice these verses and how, how technically accurate they are. Verse 7 of Revelation 12, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was there peace found any more in heaven. What do you know? So things are getting better in heaven, but not on this earth. In other words, they prevailed not, so they were cast down to this earth. And, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his demons, it should read, were cast out with him." So this is, this is mind-shattering when you think about it. What, what, is, what is really going on here? If you, you think about this, this is the God of this world that is uh, being cast down to this earth and confined to it. And all the demons with him, millions and millions of them, are confined to this earth. Do you think that would make a difference? And that would be why all these terrible, violent events are happening? Well, I would say, certainly say so. Many millions of demons, and combine that with Satan the devil, and you can see that this prince of the power of the air is really doing his dirty work, and people don't even understand it. People often scoff at even the fact that we talk about a devil, but God talks about him throughout the Bible. And you can see what I'm saying. It isn't something that's invisible. 
It's a prophecy, and it's being fulfilled right before our eyes, and that, that, just, that just makes it a witness for all of us. And God will hold us accountable for what we know and don't know in, uh, in the attitude that we have. When this all happens, it really is shocking. So let me read verse 12 of Revelation 12 again. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea! See? Rejoice in the heavens! He's kicked out of the heavens, and they're rejoicing. But on this earth it is woe, woe, woe! All kinds of problems. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time." This is really a spectacular joy that we have, if we just understand it. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Now the woman is, of course, God's own church. The woman is a symbol of churches, good and bad, but this is God's church here. And notice what it says, and I'll just refer to this, what I wrote about it before. This prophecy shows that as soon as Satan was cast down, the very first thing he did was to attack the church immediately. What does that mean? He did it immediately. He was cast down, and he, he attacked the church. He knew how vulnerable they were, for sure. You know that. After all, He's the God of this world. Verse 13 specifically dates this prophecy. We can point to a specific time when God's true church was forcibly attacked by the devil in this end time. Now let me read another paragraph to you. This links directly with the prophecy in 2 Thessalonians 2. Satan and his demons were cast down to the earth at the same time that he, a man who restrains, was taken out of the way. A man that was holding it back, this synagogue of Satan in the church, he was holding it back because of his authority. But then God removed him, took him out of the way. He wanted to test his own church and see what, what kind of character they really had. And they immediately invaded the church and began casting uh, truth to the ground. They immediately did that. And it all started on January 16, 1986. If you look at this spiritually, and we should also look at it that way, even though you can see a lot of it physically as well. So here we have God's leader just really been holding back the synagogue of Satan or the evil works of some people in God's own church. But God took him out of the way. He wanted to prove his own people, his own church. He saw problems developing. And so you had these evil minions come down to this earth and bring the worst suffering we've ever seen, and it's getting worse. And it's getting so much more dangerous with all the nuclear bombs and the other weapons of mass destruction. All of it coming from this malevolent influence that we need to be aware of. But here's the thing. The Laodicean era began January 16, 1986. This lukewarm Laodicean church. See, they had a real problem. Lukewarm, and not excited about God's work. And God spews them right out of His mouth. You can read that in Revelation 3. So God knew this was the end of the Philadelphia era, and that was led by Herbert W. Armstrong. He died, and you can see all of this physically and spiritually. Satan was leading the Church of God on January the 16th. He started this January 16th when Herbert Armstrong died. He started at that very moment to be open in his evil actions. And let me just tell you another reason why, if you look at it spiritually. Two days later, it was the Sabbath. This man who was taking over and doing some very evil things, in his message, he changed the very mission 
of God's church, taking the gospel to the entire world. He changed that. This was, again, you see, on the Sabbath, and he was changing the very heart of everything happening in God's church. Now, he didn't just start that on that Sabbath. You know he knew January the 16th he was, he was going to do that. And even before that, if you look at it spiritually, it goes all the way back to January the 16th if you look at it spiritually, and in some ways physically as well. January the 16th was the very day that Satan was cast to this earth with millions and millions of demons. And Satan has no goodness in him, no truth in him at all. He's a liar from the all the beginning and a murderer. And he is leading all this that you see happening on the earth, and it's going to get worse unless we heed God's warning message. It revolves around Revelation 12 and verse 12. But there's no goodness in him. But spiritually, Satan was cast down on January the 16th, the very time that Mr. Armstrong died. This rebel was the uh, wrong leader for him to choose. Again, people can deceive you because they are so deceptive. But as soon as Herbert W. Armstrong died, Satan changed the commission of the work from that very point. If you look at it spiritually, it didn't just happen two days later. He had this in his mind even before Mr. Armstrong died, but he couldn't do it openly or he'd have been fired. And of course, he wanted to take over. That was his plan. It shows us, though, that Satan was cast down on the very day Mr. Armstrong died, and that's a satanic change, a satanic change to this world. You can't even imagine what, what they can do to this world. Satan has awesome power. And all of those demons have more power than we human beings have, and we have no chance against them unless God intervenes for us. And He has no trouble getting rid of them. That war in heaven, they lost. They lose all their wars against God, even in His church, if they'll be loyal to God and His truth. So here we see that. When Mr. Armstrong was removed, then uh, what happened? Well, if you look at Revelation 3 and verse 9, God says there's a synagogue of Satan, a synagogue of Satan in God's own church, but it was doing everything secretly. It remained there, and most people didn't know it, but it was there, and it became the Laodicean era as soon as Mr. Armstrong died. See, it, th these people got control of the very church of God, and God had a way to, to deal with this. That January the 18th was the Sabbath, and then there was Thursday, and then Friday, and then Sabbath. That was just two days later after Mr. Armstrong's death, just a couple of days later. And then the commission to God's apostle, Mr. Armstrong, was changed from Matthew 24 and verse 14, gospel being taken to the world, and Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, if you want to look that up. But this is all explained in uh, my son's book on raising the ruins. All of that is made very clear. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2 and verses 1 through 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him. It's about the second coming. Good news! That you be not soon shaken in mind, or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, that is the second coming of Christ, except there comes a falling away first. It's going to come before that. This is a sign. This falling away is a sign that the coming of Christ is very soon. That's what it's saying. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Wow! 
that's a mean hombre here, somebody that's doing a lot of damage to God's people and turning the church of God away from God, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, he's acting like he's God. On down in verses 10 and 15, God says, if you will just keep these instructions, it says traditions, but instruction would be better. If you'll just keep this instruction you've had, you won't have any trouble with Satan the devil. But if you, if you uh, desert that, forsake God, you certainly will be in trouble, serious trouble. This man of sin, Moffat reads, it, the day of the Lord and uh, Christ's return, will not come till the rebellion takes place first of all with the revealing of the lawless one. This is a lawless person. And this is an example that all the ministers can see, and it's a sign of the second coming of Christ being short, soon. It also is a witness to the whole world that they can see this and see what God is about to do. And the great tribulation, the day of the Lord, is on the horizon. One translation, and several commentaries actually, call this a great falling away. Ninety-five percent of God's people just fell away from Him when Herbert Armstrong died. It started there, and that's a sad time in this church. Ninety-five percent of God's people falling away. The great revolt it is called often. He's called the son of perdition. That means that's the only label that Judas Iscariot had. And now there's another man that has the same problem. He's the son of perdition too, which means what? Well, Judas Iscariot rebelled and betrayed Christ Himself when He was on this earth and turned Him over to the authorities where He could be beaten savagely and crucified. This man is betraying on the level of Judas Iscariot. He is betraying Christ Himself today. Christ is the head of God's church. God allows it for a little while, but not for long. But it's certainly a monstrous betrayal. Verses 5 through 7, how could that betrayal happen? Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withhold, Greek katecho, meaning restrains or holds back. This apostle of God is holding all this back, this synagogue of Satan, because of his authority and government that God has given him. And it goes on to say that the man of sin might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who restrains will let or restrain and or hold back until he be taken out of the way. Until this leader God has is taken out of the way so God can test his people to see how much they loved his truth. How much they loved his truth. Now, that's something that we, we must understand. We really must understand that, you see. But once Mr. Armstrong died, there was all the, the synagogue of Satan just came out in this, into a, an open manifestation of everything they were thinking, and they, they were following Satan, the devil, and not God. That's how bad that synagogue of Satan was. Even him, the son of perdition, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power. Satan has all power, a great power, more than men, and signs and lying wonders. Signs and lying wonders. Isn't that amazing? He's taken out of the way now, and, and this, this all happens. Verse 8, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of His mouth, His truth, and bring to an end by the appearance of His coming. That's from the New American Standard Bible. Verse 11, And we see that it is the full force of evil's delusion. God just let, let it all happen, and let this evil man get control 
of the church of God. And God, he, he sent delusion. He wanted to know if they loved the truth and if they would stand by it and, and not just bury it, cast it down in, in the dirt, the earth. But they, they did just the opposite. See, in verse 10 says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, or it should read, are perishing. They're perishing spiritually because they receive not the love of the truth. How much do we love God's truth? How much will we fight for it? Will we even, if necessary, die for it? Many men did in the past, a lot of them. See, but there's only a little flock today, and God says there, if you hang on to these instructions, verse 15, that's what it should read, if you'll hang on to those, you can stand strong and be working very hard to cling to God's truth and never give it up. God says you, you have to work hard that, and let no man take your crown. It, if you use God's power, you won't lose God's crown. I just want to mention one more thing in our book on God's Miracle Day, January 16th, and we'll send that to you. But uh, I'm going to add to the list of uh, notable events on that day, and this January 16th is going to add the, the day that Satan was cast to this earth, and that was on the same day that Herbert W. Armstrong died. God let the delusion come and wanted to know if His own people had the strength to stand up and really did love the truth of God. We should love it more than our lives, by far, because God in His Bible, it's, that is the truth, and the, the only truth there is. John talks about that. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Malachi's Message to God's Church today, Overcoming Satan, and January 16, God's Miracle Day. Also request Gerald Fleury's free book, The True History of God's True Church. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.